What's going on folks? I'm here today with a platforming shooter, a game that could have easily been written down in my books as played and done, but instead this game made a lasting impression on me. This is Hunt Down, a game that brought me back to two of my favorite films, Fifth Element and The Warriors, but now it's a 16-bit shooter, and more impressingly, this is the first game from the developers at Easy Trigger AB, and for a first game, you can color me impressed. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, why not hit the subscribe button, and if you would prefer an audio-only version, the link will be below. Is Hunt Down worth $20? Well, I'm about to tell you. My name is Tanner, and this is For Your Money, a different kind of review. Hunt Down takes place in a city that has been overrun by criminal gangs. Gangs that cause so much havoc, the police themselves are afraid to stumble into the wrong turf. You're one of three bounty hunters. Your goal is to kill all the bounty targets given to you by the Wolf Mother, and in doing so, you also help reclaim the streets so people can now walk freely without the worry of a hockey puck being stuck in their face. For a game that's in the realm of a metal slug, this is a nice story. Short, yes, but hey, when a quarter bought you limited lives, you really had to sell the game based on how it played, and seeing as this game is going for that arcade style, it does its job, and you know where the main focus is. Hunt Down is a platforming shooter that is full of explosions and weapons. Now, I was surprised at the weapon variety in this game. I expected your simple assault, SMG, and shotgun, but they ended up giving us a variety of those three, plus tons more, such as weapons you'd find on a tank or a grenade that causes like eight explosions. Each of these weapons are brutal and make for a bloodbath on screen. Of course, weapons will matter depending on the situation you're in. Enemies have health bars, and some of them are going to be tougher than others, as well as some have armor meters, and then after that, you'll see their health meter, and a pistol just won't seal the deal. Luckily, enemies for the most part tend to drop their weapons, so you should be in the clear. Plus, the devs are also lenient with weapon placement. If you do die, you will spawn at the nearest checkpoint and all weapons will be lost unless you're in a boss fight. They once again gave us some leeway because these battles aren't anything to joke about. They are tough. Reason for that is one, some bosses have multiple health bars and some have you destroying the object they're driving or using and then you damage them or you fight them. And to top it off, every boss fight is distinctly different. At no point did I find myself using the same tactic for one boss on another one because there was just no way. And considering every level in this game ends with a boss fight, it's imposing to think of the brain work that had to go into each and every one of these just to make them unique. Now with me mentioning differences, I can't leave out one key feature that took the cake for me in this game, and that's the cover mechanic. Any crate you see you can crouch behind, and when you shoot your weapon, your character will automatically stand up and shoot over the cover and go back down. It works the same way with holes in the wall. Get into a hole and shoot left or right, and once you're done, your character is back to taking cover. This is like the jump button from Ion Fury. It seems like a strange mechanic to get excited over, but seeing them in a game like this, it just gets us fans excited because it's a fresh take on a classic genre of gaming. You can also slide when you're running forward. You just have to hit the analog stick diagonally. And I bring this up because if you're like me, you like to play games like this with your directional pad, but with the sliding mechanic proving highly effective and seeing as trying to go diagonal without using the analog stick is difficult, most likely you won't be using the directional pad. But you forget about it. Three levels in, you're just going with the flow of the action. As for the platforming in the game, it is silky smooth. Jumping pits and dodging fallen debris will be the least of your worries, but you do do it so often that it's a key mechanic. Above all, you can't have an arcade shooter like this without being able to play couch co-op. Yep, you can play this game with a friend or your kid to show them that gaming is more than Call of Duty or Madden. The co-op in this game works seamlessly. If your teammate dies, you have 20 seconds to revive them by mashing the button that's prompted. If you don't get to them in time, they're going to spawn at the next checkpoint you come across. One thing to keep in mind is though there are two bounty hunters, it doesn't exactly make anything easier due to the fact that supplies are now limited. Meaning in my book, the best player will need the health pickup. And if you're both equally as good, then may the best man get to it first. At the end of the day, Hunt Down is addicting. Once I picked it up, I could not put it back down. Whether it was bashing some baddies with a wrench or blasting them to smithereens with a shotgun, I just couldn't get enough. And just like that, the devs sold me on the gameplay. So if this were an arcade machine, they would definitely profit off me because I would keep inserting them quarters until I went broke. Hunt Down 16-bit action mixed with its over-the-top cheese fest dialogue mixes perfectly together to bring us the design gamers should love. The world, as I said, is similar to Fifth Element. Flying cars, buildings as tall as the clouds. Ironically, with how retro this game looks, it complements the futuristic setting. As for the sound of the game, voice acting and dialogue brought me back to an old Stallone film called Cobra. 
over the top fun, except this game involves quite a bit of puns. I mentioned earlier how you pick one of three bounty hunters to play as, and one interesting factor about the dialogue I like is when you die and respawn at a checkpoint, you're spawning at a doctor's car, and depending on who you play as decides what his lines are. I mainly played as the cyborg Mo Man, and when I died he would talk about how I'm a tin can who doesn't need bandages, or sometimes the doc is talking to someone else and says he stared at me through the whole operation. It's nice when devs take their time to put in little details like these. As for the music, it would go from me feeling like I was listening to a darker version of the Vice City theme song, and other times I thought Rush's Tom Sawyer was about to play. It differs that much. Overall, the design of this game peaked within the first mission, and it kept its groove. So here's some clips of Hunt Down's design. Trying to get a slice of attention. Bounty hunters in here! Through the whole operation. Bounty found. Just in time for trying out my new security system. Have fun. It's been a long time since the company acquired your services. So, once again, you were personally selected for the job. We trust you are willing to accept. Affirmative. We are willing to accept, Miss Rose. I had a feeling you'd say that. A mother knows her children. Hunt Down is a true love for any 16-bit platforming shooter fan. This game has loads of missions. I mean, I had about 5-6 to six hours in this game, and that's including my time looking for the 3 hidden collectibles in each mission. Hunt Down sells for $20, and it's worth the $20 price tag. This is one hell of a first game that is worth boasting about. It's addicting and will bring back those fond memories of you being in the arcades with your buds. I have nothing but love for this game, and I cannot wait to see what they work on next. That's all I got, folks. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe? If you did not enjoy it, hit that thumbs down. Till next time, fellas.